Hello, this is Solar PV TV from Dubai, from Desert Energy Leadership Summit, uh, from the 8th Summit. And uh, I'm very happy because for the first time, we are speaking with Mr. Peter Therium, who is uh, CEO of Energy, over 20 billion company. Uh, the company which was uh, created uh, last year as a part uh, of uh, renewable energy business of RWE. So Mr. Therium, uh, hello, uh, guten Tag. Yes, hello. So, Mr. Terium, I would like to ask you first question about your history with uh, RWE. Yes, because you started uh, working for energy sector uh, within uh, RWE. Yes. Yes, I did in 2003, quite some time ago, at times where uh, renewable was uh, not on its expansion, when prices for uh, electricity in uh, Germany and in Europe were very high, and we were building new power plants. So, in my opinion, they are like uh, free visionary. CEOs in the utility space. So it's Mr. Staraja, it's uh, Madame Kosher, and uh, you are the third uh, person, which in my opinion will be in charge of the change of the paradigm of the world. How did you come up with the idea of uh, uh, pushing renewables within the group? Well, we had years and years of problems in our conventional generation. Write-offs, uh, multiple billion uh, euros, and we were uh, really suffering from low profits and uh, high uh, debts. We then sat back and said, now, if we would forget about all these difficulties and we would start new, what would the future energy company look like? And then we said it needs to have a lot of generation, but it needs to be purely renewable. But only renewable generation is not enough. This needs to uh, also be integrated in the grid. So it would be very good if this company also has a grid which can accommodate uh, absorbing the volatile uh, generation of renewables. And at the end of the day, we need customers. Customers not only to offtake the electricity, but to be a part of the solution. Because a flexible customer with demand management can contribute to the uh, stability of the system. And then we said, but RWE already has all of that. So we took out our customer business, our grid business, and the renewable business, and that was the foundation of energy. And uh, I would like to ask you, because uh, RWE, like uh, big utility, is quite a conservative company, yes? And was it difficult, was it a challenge, you know, to persuade uh, people within the group? Well, sometimes it helps if you are the CEO. <laughs> Make, okay. Makes it uh, a lot easier. But um, I think the pressure of what we call the Energiewende, the energy transition in Germany, uh, I think in Germany uh, the consequence of that has been manifested in its most extreme form. We had electricity prices so low that the company was just in a kind of a death spiral. It was struggling for survival. And that sets free a lot of energy and uh, uh, encourages people to think different because Continuing the same way was very clear that this was a, uh, a route without an end. Oh, Mr. Terim, I would like to ask you the same question that I asked uh, Mr. Starace from NL about the world 4.0. What will be, let's say, the energy of the future? And if energy will be providing the whole family solution, yeah? including electric car, including maybe smart apartment or smart house with all the appliances. Yes? So not only like uh, energy solution, but let's say the whole family solution. Yes, of course. And uh, we don't need to produce and deliver it ourselves, but we need to be able to offer it to our customers. And uh, what is important is that we are the contractor, the energy manager that keeps it all together and that is able to put a price on it so that you can take advantage of all those good solutions. And uh, how do you see, you know, the, let's say, evolving of the utility, which even if, if it's like a private company, but uh, still, had quite a strong monopolistic position, yes, in the country, and now you are uh, coming to the consumer market. How does it work, you know, in the, in the minds of uh, your employees? Well, it, it's basically a huge cultural shift. Mm -hmm. But uh, we started that cultural shift uh, already in 2012 when I uh, became a member of the board. And now we take the advantage that this change in culture allows us to think different, to think out of the box, to think innovative and uh, to work on these kind of solutions. And how do you imagine the world 4.0? 4.0 is for me the world in which everything is connected to everything. And uh, that means everything in your house, 
but uh, also with everything outside of your house. It can be your electric car when you're on the road, but it also can be uh, solar panels or wind parks somewhere included in the grid. All of that is connected and the grid is going to be the backbone, the one where it all comes together. And 4.0 really means a uh, complete new world full of opportunities. And also with the strong position of energy. Of course, uh, that's why we uh, started energy. The name says it, energy, it includes energy, it includes technology, but it also includes innovation. So Mr. Thirium, so we are speaking about the word 4.0, but in order to arrive to this world, we still have some work to do, yes? It's very interesting for me. Why actually did you come for this event here in Dubai? Because here we see a lot of things coming together. We see uh, renewable generation at a very, very low cost, which is logical because of there's a lot of sun and a lot of wind uh, over here. But we also see this coming together in a major city like Dubai. The future, we see more and more people living in cities, moving to cities, and the concept of renewable energy and smart cities that uh, can use uh, cooling or heat as storage, that can use energy uh, management or demand management as a part of the solution is what we see very good uh, over here. And then we see here a government that is really committed to make the transition to a uh, all CO2 free world. And is it also related to the fact that uh, uh, in Dubai, the decision makers, they are always, uh, they have long term vision, yes? And also I believe that Inogy has long term vision. Is it also uh, one of the reasons that you created a uh, joint venture with, uh, with Diva, for example? Yes, we uh, created that already in RWE days, quite a few years ago. But uh, we think that the cooperation with uh, the Dubai Electricity and Water Authority is a very positive one. And uh, it was one where we could bring in all our strengths. We've done a study about the future of the uh, energy policy uh, in here. And we are working now uh, in a joint venture also with investing in small uh, startups, ventures that uh, can contribute to finding those 4.0 solutions that need to uh, make out the future energy system. Also to change the paradigm of the country, yes? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so uh, the last question, uh, because I think that uh, Mr. Paul Vanson and the team uh, uh, is counting always on uh, your presence at the DIA summit. So will you come for the next year's summit? Well, it depends if Paul uh, invites me. Okay, so I think that uh, Paul will invite you and uh, hopefully uh, we can meet each other next year in Dubai. Last but not least, I would like to congratulate you for your vision and for uh, pushing the uh, utility space towards renewables. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.